Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about house plant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And I have got a lot of Hoyas in my collection. I absolutely love Hoyas. I think on the whole they're just really easy to grow, resilient, robust, just beautiful, beautiful plants. But today I've whittled it down to my top 25 Hoyas and so I'm going to take you through them one by one, I'm going to show you them, talk a little bit about why I love them, give you some growing tips, all that sort of stuff. And so yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So, as always, these are in no particular order, but the one I'm going to start with is one that I maybe don't speak about that much on my channel. It is the Hoya Globulosa Welsh Mountain Zoo, and I just think this is the most beautiful Hoya. Obviously, it's got those gorgeous shades of green within its leaves. It's got such beautiful, shiny, waxy leaves with that lovely dark veination. But the thing that I really love about this Hoya, and I don't know how well you're going to be able to tell on camera, but it's got really velvety soft backs to the leaves. It's got kind of thousands of teeny tiny hairs and it is genuinely like bunny's ears to feel. It's, it's so gorgeous. And when it does put out tendrils, the tendrils are also really, really soft and fuzzy, which I don't think is the case with any of my other Hoyas. They can be quite kind of like twig-like. And this one is just, uh, it just ticks loads of boxes for me. I think it's just lovely. And I got this one probably just over a year ago now it would have been. I got it from the second plant swap that I went to in London and I was very kindly given this one. And I'd actually never seen this type of Hoya before and it kind of blew my mind. It had a really big long tendril at the time and I just could not stop feeling it. I thought it was just amazing. And it's done really well for me in the time that I've had it and I feel like this maybe isn't an accurate representation of how quickly it grows because I have taken quite a few cuttings of it in the time that I've had it. I think if I hadn't cut it, it would probably have four or five more leaves now. And when I first got it, it only had two leaves. So I, I, although Hoyas aren't always the fastest growing plants in the world, this one I would say isn't the slowest. That's a bad way of saying it. It is a moderate growing speed. Do you know what I mean? I know what I mean. But yeah, I've given a few cuttings to friends. I've got another section propagating in my cabinet at the moment. I'm trying to just kind of fill the plants out a little bit. But at some point I will definitely be getting this one onto a trellis because I can tell that it is one that really would like to climb. I know some Hoyas aren't as fussed and you can kind of grow them as trailing plants and I've got some of those that I'm going to show you. But this one, I think in order to kind of really get its growth to size up and just maximize what this plant is capable of getting it onto a trellis would be a really good idea and i have said this before as well but when you get hoyas onto a trellis to kind of like encourage them to grip on and climb it's a really good idea to wind their tendrils in an anti-clockwise direction just because that is the way that they naturally tendril and if you wind them in a clockwise direction it could it could essentially inhibit new growth it could not be doing them any favors and actually be doing worse things for them so yeah, that's the first one that I wanted to show you. It's one that makes me incredibly happy. It makes me really excited to think about its potential. And yeah, I'll continue to give you updates on it and we can come back to it in a few months time and see how it's doing. I was also really intrigued to see how other people in the plant community were growing these Hoyas. So I'll pop a couple of pictures in after each so that you can see. Look at how huge that one is. It clearly responds well to a trellis. Yeah, mine's looking more like this one at the moment, which is still really beautiful, but I would like it to be bigger and fuller. And another one that I don't really speak about that much on my channel is the Hoya Bella Albo Marginata. And I've currently got it in this little booby pot that I made out of clay recently, but I just think it is the most beautiful Hoya. And I think the reason that I don't speak about this one more is firstly because I haven't had it for that long. I've only had this plant for maybe five or six months, but it hasn't been that quick to grow for me. And so I haven't had that many growth updates to give you. But as you can see, its colouring is a lot darker than the standard Hoya Bella. And then it's got these beautiful, uh, I was going to say it's in the name, elbow margins. It's got these beautiful white 
edges to its leaves and I think it's so delicate and just so beautiful and I'm just really enjoying watching this plant grow. I can see it's getting ready at the moment to give me a couple of new leaves and that makes me really, really excited. And I found this one so far, as I say, I haven't had it that long in the grand scheme of things, but so far I have found this one very easy to grow. The standard Hoya Bella is one that I get on really well with and I find that to be a really easy and very fast growing plant. And I have also got different variations of the Hoya Bella. I've got several different types in my collection. I've also got the Hoya Louis Bois, which is a, another type of variegated Hoya Bella. And that one actually didn't make it onto the list today. I was so, so close to putting it on there, but I ran out of space. Um, but yeah, this one, if it's anything like the Hoya Bella, once it gets going, it will just, if it's anything like the standard Hoya Bella, it will just start putting out loads and loads and loads of new growth. And I hope that that's the case, because this is one that I would love to be able to, at some point, grow as a big full plant. I'm kind of tempted to chop and propagate it and just stick some sections down into the substrate. I'm currently growing this one in a semi-hydro mix. This is the chunky semi-hydro mix that I get from Soil Ninja, and it's kind of like Lechuza Pond, which I know I bang on about in lots of videos, but it doesn't contain any added fertilizer, so you can fertilize it with your own stuff, which I really like doing because I really like the fertilizer that I use. But yeah, as I say, there's not a huge amount to show at the moment, but I just think it's a really beautiful, very delicate, very easy to grow Hoya, and that is why it is on this list. When I looked on Instagram for pictures of this plant, I was actually really surprised to see that not a lot came up apart from this video. Maybe this is a rarer Hoya than I thought? I don't know. Do you guys have this plant? And then this is a Hoya that I used to speak about all the time on my channel. It is the Hoya Linearis. And the reason that I've kind of stopped featuring this one quite so much is because this one actually was not doing well for the last kind of four or five months. She's looking a little bit better now. But this plant had mealy bugs very, very badly, and Hoyas are just in general very susceptible to mealy bugs. I, I think it's because they're so robust and waxy. But this one was so hard to deal with because this one's also got very soft foliage and because it's quite delicate, all the mealy bugs tend to kind of lodge themselves in between the little leaves there. And my Hoya, my Hoya Linearis at the time was about, it was kind of probably half the height of me lengthwise and getting them all gone was so difficult. So I've propagated loads of sections of it. I did lose some sections and I can actually see I've got a section there that's not looking particularly healthy and should probably be chopped back. But I am starting to get it back to a healthy state and I'm so glad because this is a Hoya that, like I always talk about texture in plants, the texture of this one just blows my mind. It almost doesn't feel like a Hoya, like compared to the others, as I say, they're very kind of robust and waxy. And although this one does kind of feel it, there's also something about this one that's a lot more delicate and I just really like that. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful plant. And I'm so happy that now I've got to pot it up again it kind of feels like it's back in my collection because I missed this plant when I had to take it down and chop it up. It was a very sad day. Uh, but this is another one that I've also got in the same Soil Ninja semi-hydro mix. It's doing really well in that. Previously, before I chopped it up, it was in soil. And the reason that I decided to make the transfer to a different substrate once I'd rooted the plant was mainly just because I was worried that the mealy bugs might have got into the soil and I didn't want to I didn't want that to happen again. I kind of wanted to eliminate the risk of it potentially happening in the future. So yeah, it seems to be doing well. It is putting out lovely growth for me at the moment. And long may that last. I'm hoping I'll I'll be able to show you a much bigger fuller plant again the next time that I show you it, because again, this is a Hoya that is very fast growing. And I know I spoke about putting Hoyas on trellises and stuff like that. This is a Hoya that really does not need to be on a trellis. It very happily just kind of hangs. So if you're looking for a trailing Hoya, this one would definitely be one that I'd recommend. But yeah, I love it. I find it very rewarding to grow. And yeah, again, I'll, I'll keep you updated with her. And hopefully next time she's looking a little bit like she was before. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, there was a lot more that came up when I typed in the Hoya Linearis. Just look at that bloom. It's so pretty. And also someone's made a reel here on how to propagate this plant. And oh my goodness, this one roots so quickly. I tend to propagate in water as well and it roots ridiculously fast. 
And I couldn't quite decide whether or not to include this Hoyer on this list because it is one that I've literally only owned for less than a week and it has beaten out some of the other Hoyers in my collection onto this list but I felt like it had to be on this list. It is the Hoyer Obervarte Splash and the reason I'm not kind of holding it fully, fully upright is because it's not rooted yet and it's not very stable in the substrate I've got it in. I was thinking about putting this one straight down into soil, but again, as you might have guessed by this video so far, I am having a lot of luck growing Hoya in semi-hydro. So this is again in a pond-like mix. This is Soil Ninja's equivalent. And I am so excited to watch this plant grow because it's got the most beautiful splashy variegation on its leaves. And this is one that I actually treated myself to for my birthday. It is almost my birthday now at the time of filming this. I released that unboxing video a little bit early because I was so excited about the plants that I'd got. But I think that this, and I said it in the video, but I think this is such a generous cutting. This is literally just one cutting of the plant. And if it roots down, I've got multiple growth points in the substrate. If it roots down, I'm hoping I should be able to get lots of lovely sections of growth coming out of it. And the thing that I really like about this Hoya is that it's not that uniform in its growth. From what I can see, none of the leaves, obviously the variegation on the leaves is all very different, but the shape of the leaves as well is quite unpredictable. Like they're all, none of them are the same. They're all very different. And I really, really like that. I like having plants that you kind of don't know what you're gonna get with them. Like I've got some others that are very predictable in their growth and I kind of know that, I know that the next leaf is gonna look something like this and maybe it'll be a bit bigger or maybe it'll be a bit smaller. But with this one, I feel like it's just gonna be quite fun to watch what kind of growth it gives me. Um, and I can't comment obviously on the growth rate of this plant at the moment because I haven't owned it for that long, but, and this might be a bad way to think of it, but I always think the price that you pay for a plant and how kind of common a plant is considered in your area sometimes has, it like sometimes feeds into how quick it is to grow. And bearing in mind, I think I paid 12 pounds for this cutting and it's a very generous cutting. I would have thought this one is on the upper end of growth in its growth rate. Why can't I talk about growth rate in a way that makes sense today? <laughs> but if any of you own this Hoya, then please do let me know in the comments. Let me know how quickly yours grows, because I'd love to know. I'm desperate for this one to get going. But at the moment, it is just in this, in this container, hopefully rooting or starting to root. And yeah, I will let you know how it gets on. I was really excited to have a look at the plant community pictures of this one, because as I say, I haven't had the plant that long. And by the looks of it, it gets pretty big. So I'm so excited to watch this one grow. There's a picture just there of it hanging. There's also some, as you can see, of it on a trellis. So a little bit torn as to what to do, but I guess I will just figure that out as I go. And then this is a weird Hoya. I do quite like the kind of funky, weird, unusual ones, but I know that this one probably wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea. It is the Hoya Caudata Sumatra. And I got this from my friend Emma's collection. She was getting rid of it a while ago and she just said, I am i don't think at the time she was that much of a fan of the kind of almost prehistoric looking slightly, I wanna say slightly mottled and dead. I know they're not, like I think this is actually a very healthy plant that I've got going here, but it's obviously not as vibrant and green. It wasn't doing it for her and I was really into weird Hoyas at that point. So I just said, yeah, I will happily, happily take it from you. And this is one that I do need to get onto a trellis. In fact, I've got a lot that I need to do to this plant. When I first got it, it didn't have a massive root system. So I popped it into sphagnum moss and it's been in sphagnum moss for, I want to say about a year now. And as you can see, it has got really fantastic roots in there, but it's definitely ready to be potted up. I know you can technically grow Hoya in sphagnum moss for the whole lives if you want to, but for me, I don't usually have the best success rate doing it that way. And I find that moss can get a little bit, get a little bit mushy over time as it kind of breaks down. And I am currently fertilizing this moss because I want obviously the plants to be able to get lots of nutrients. Sphagnum moss alone doesn't tend to contain any nutrients that plants need to grow. So that's what I'm doing. And I will probably transfer this one either to soil or semi-hydro. And as I say, get it onto a trellis. I do have quite a few trellises that are just kind of lying around my flat at the moment. And so it's on my list of things to do because I'd love to bring out the best in this Hoya. I think it's so weird. It's so cool. Its leaves again are 
the, okay, so these ones, these are furry, but they're not like, I know I spoke about the softness with the Hoya Globulosa Welsh Mountain Zoo, and these ones are more, they're soft, but they're, they're kind of almost bristly, like they're not like super soft, you wouldn't want to like, I was going to say rub them on your face or anything like that, but it is just a really, really cool plant, and I really like having diversity in my plant collection, I don't want all of my plants to look the same, and this is just very, very different to anything else I own, and as you can see just here, it is putting out some new growth, and I really like how its new growth comes in quite dark, and then it gets lighter and almost kind of like a muted sagey green colour. But yeah, I'm really excited to watch this one grow. I'll let you know once it's on a trellis because I think then it will probably start giving me some beautiful growth. It does seem quite quick to grow. So yeah, I will let you know. There were a lot of cool pictures that came up on this plant actually and most of the pictures I saw people were growing it on a trellis. The other thing that I was really intrigued about is look at the flowers of it and look how fuzzy and furry the flowers are. I know I said the leaves were, but oh my goodness, I can't wait for this one to flower. Also, there was a picture here of one that was really red and I'm not sure if that's just sun stress. I wonder if I could get mine to do that. And then this one is the Hoya Wyetia tricolor. I love this Hoya so much. I love the colors in its leaves. It's got those beautiful darker outer edges to its leaves and then kind of gorgeous yellowy, almost kind of yeah, lime green, yellowy centres. And it's new growth that comes in is often very pink as well, which is just beautiful. But it is, however, potentially, I would say the slowest growing Hoya that I own. And I think this does come down to my environment that I'm growing it in, because when I was living back at my mum's house, I had this growing in her conservatory and it was growing pretty quickly. I got this one as just one or two cuttings, I think, maybe like two years ago now, and it only had a couple of leaves. So obviously it has grown quite a lot. But since I've moved here, which has been nine or 10 months now, I don't think it's given me any new growth at all. And the plant is still looking lovely and full and healthy, but it's just not giving me anything. And I've checked it for flat mites, I've checked it for just kind of pests in general. And I think it's probably just because it's not getting quite as much light as it was before. So I should probably get it under a grow light or move it a little bit closer to a window even. But yeah, it is a very, very beautiful Hoya. It's one that, again, is very different from any of the others in my collection. I have got the standard Hoya Wyetii that I'll show you shortly because it is on this list. And I love the length in the leaves of the Wyetii, but as I say, the colours in this one just blow my mind. And I am growing this one on this, so this is a trellis, but this is more of just kind of a decorative trellis for this Hoya. I've just kind of tied it up. It's not tendrilling. It doesn't really seem to want to climb at the moment. So if it does, then obviously I will start kind of wrapping it round and trying to get some more growth going that way. But for the time being, I think it just looks lovely like this. I'll also link the trellis that I use down below because I use trellises like this for a few of my plants but it's just so pretty. So despite the fact that it isn't the fastest grower in the world, it's one that still makes me very happy. Again, not a huge amount came up on the community tab for this plant, but I think a lot of people probably just know it as the variegated Hoya Wetii. But what you can see in some of the pictures is just look at the pinkiness. This is what I was talking about before and you can't see it that clearly on mine at the moment, but in some of these pictures, it's just, it's, it's really obvious and it's really beautiful. Look at that. And the next one that I want to show you is one that was a wishlist Hoya of mine for such a long time and I've had it for just over a year now. It is the Hoya Wilbur Graves and this is one that actually nowadays is a little bit more accessible but when I first started looking for cuttings of this plant they were so expensive. I think I finally got mine for about £25 for a two leaf cutting which at the time was a very very good price and it has obviously put out some beautiful growth in the time that I've had it. But I've tried quite a lot with this plant. This has kind of been a little bit like my experimental Hoya. I, um, I rooted it into, in a propagation box and it, it started rooting beautifully. I potted it up and I decided to try growing this plant on a moss pole just because it had the most insane aerial roots. I was like, I wonder what would happen if you grew a Hoya on a moss pole? Would it make the growth size up? Like, what would it do? 
And so I got it onto a moss pole and to be honest, nothing really happened. It did form some roots in the moss pole and it did start to attach, but I didn't notice any change in its growth rate. I didn't notice any difference in the leaf sizing up and I just hated the look of it, to be honest. So I decided to take it off the moss pole and what I've done now, because it was kind of very stretched and leggy, I've wound it round and just kind of tucked sections of it into the soil. You can kind of see there, just using little hairpins. And I'm hoping that the roots that it's established, the aerial roots will kind of root down into the soil and it will potentially start putting out lots of new growth points because of that. Kind of in the same way that you would do with a pothos or a scandapsis or something like that. So yeah, that's my hope for the plant. But I'm currently growing this one in my cabinet. It seems very happy in there. It's a very, I mean, to be honest, all Hoyas tend to be quite drought tolerant, but this one currently, the soil is pretty much completely dry. It is due for a water, but it's still feeling lovely and conditioned. Its leaves are still lovely and kind of robust because sometimes they can go quite flat. And I've actually found it very, very easy to grow. So despite the fact that it has got that kind of rare label attached to it, I think it's just because it's not that easily accessible in some areas, it is probably one of my easiest Hoyas. Uh, and the thing that I really love as well, and I don't know how well you can see because it is fading a little bit now, but that's its newest leaf and it's been right under my grow light and it did actually come in with the silveriness being quite pinky just because it was sun stressed and I thought that was so beautiful. So yeah, it's a very, a very rewarding one to grow, one that I really love having in my collection and I, as I say, I don't have any plans to change the way I'm growing it currently. I'm gonna keep it like this, see what it does. If it doesn't work, I'll change it up again. I'll take some cuttings maybe and get it a bit fuller that way. I don't know yet, but for now that is what it's looking like. So I first came across the Hoya Wilbergraves from a picture on Instagram and I fell in love with it. It was a social media influence, but you can see why. It just photographs so well. It almost doesn't look real. It's just amazing. And this person's was, it just blew my mind. Look at the size of that and look how splashy it is. Oh my God, if I could get mine to that stage, I would be so happy. And then this one I haven't spoken about in a while, and if you've watched my other videos, I feel like you will notice some pretty insane growth in this plant since the last time I showed you it. It's my Hoya croniana, uh, which actually I found out is officially called the lacunosa. I didn't know that before, I was just calling it the croniana. I just wanted to pause for a minute because what I've said isn't actually 100% accurate, and there's not a lot of information out there on this. But many Hoya lacunosas nowadays are actually sold labelled as the croniana because they look super similar and they grow in the same fashion. The way to determine whether or not you've got a true croniana is by looking at the base of the leaf where it joins the petiole. If it's a chordate love heart shape, then you've got a croniana. However, if it's more rounded, then it's typically a lacunosa. But this one again has given me some grief. Like, it looks fairly healthy at the moment and actually it's looking pretty good on camera, but this is another one that did have mealy bugs and I've said it in other videos recently, but since like since I moved here, I have struggled with mealy bugs more so than I have done in the entire time of owning plants and my Hoyas have been really badly affected. So this one has had several treatments. It spent a lot of time over the last kind of four or five months in and out of isolation, but finally it is back at the point where it's looking pretty full, pretty healthy. It's, it's flowered for me several times recently as well, which is gorgeous. I love the blooms of this one. They just smell amazing. And it is putting out lots of lovely new growth, which makes me really, really happy. And the thing I love about the Croniana in kind of all its forms is just how delicate its leaves are. Like, they're like little teardrops. They're just so beautiful. And bar the pests, it is another one that is on the whole very easy to grow and very quick to grow as well. I don't know why I thought this type of plant would be quite slow when I first got it, but it's probably one of my speediest Hoyas to grow. So yeah, I absolutely love it. I'd highly, highly, highly recommend it. If you're a beginner and you're kind of just getting into Hoyas and you want to try and root something and grow something yourself from scratch, I would say this is a really good one to start with. And as I say, there are different species of this plant within the genus as well, which I really like and I've included in this video as well, so keep watching. But yeah, it's a very quick to grow, quick to propagate, quick to root, just all around rewarding plant and I think it's amazing. 
So when I typed in Hoya Lacunosa on Instagram, this picture came up and this is identical to the flowers that my one produces. Obviously I was sold mine as a Hoya Croniana, but the blooms are literally exactly the same. But I'm still a little bit confused on the idea of mine and I'm wondering if maybe it's a hybrid. There's lots of, as you can see, useful information that people have put on there about different types of Lacunosa. But the foliage of mine is a lot shorter than this one, for example. So I'm not entirely sure. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to know. And I did a growth comparison on this Hoya the other day in one of my videos, but it is the Hoya SP Bertinet AF. And it is one of my favorite Hoyas. I know it might not look like much compared to some of the others, but there's just something about this plant that just really has my heart. It just makes me very, very happy. I love the texture of it. Again, it's so, so soft. And the thing that amazes me about this one is just all the different shades of green in its leaves. And I said in that video as well, and I'm not entirely sure this is the case, but I think it could be because I've been growing this one in fairly bright light that that's happening, almost kind of like a form of sun stressing. Because like, if you look at that leaf, for example, you can tell it's got really black edges and then towards the center of the leaf, it's quite light and greeny. And I got this as a cutting and I think I only had about two or three leaves when I first got it just over a year ago. And I didn't notice the color variation within the leaves at all at that point. So that's something that's definitely developed either with maturity or higher lighting, probably a combination of the two. But again, this is one that I've chopped up and propagated quite a lot. You can see where I've taken cuttings here. I've got loads of sections of this plant propagating around my flats. I really want to pop them all up together soon and get it going as like a massive full plant. Because again, it's one that I don't really think needs to be on a trellis. I don't, I don't think it would massively benefit its growth. It seems very happy just growing like this. As you can see at the top here, it's putting out lots of lovely new growth as well. So yeah, it's a Hoya that I just, I really can't imagine not having in my collection. I look at it pretty much every single day. It's right above my kitchen, so like whenever I come through in the morning, I'm always like, oh, how's this one doing? And yeah, I just really adore it. I think it's just a beautiful little Hoya. It's, it is just so adorable. And yeah, for me, it's, it's definitely a solid favorite in my collection. So when I typed this plant in, this is the one that caught my attention immediately, this reel, because it looks pretty much the same as my plant, maybe not quite as big. But then I saw this one, and this is a variegated version, and oh my god, look how pinky it is. Kind of makes me think I want to get a variegated version. And that's kind of the size of the cutting that mine started as. It was about that size about a year and a half ago, so I'm really, really proud to see how far this plant's come. And I've just found mealy bugs on this next one that I'm going to show you, which is really annoying. But another one that I'm growing as a hanging plant is the Hoya gratzalis. And I've actually got multiples of this plant in my collection. I've got two kind of full plants like this, and then I've got lots of cuttings of it as well. And for multiple reasons, I basically was on the hunt to find a true gratzalis. And the one that I was originally sold actually turned out to be a pubicalix Hawaiian that I've shown you in this video. But I, from that point on, was just like, I really want a true gratzalis. I think they're such beautiful plants. And I did eventually find one, but I also got several cuttings along the way. And then I just got impatient and ended up getting the full plant. So yeah, but I can, I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera, but in there, see that white dot? That is a mealybug. And I can't see loads of them. But where there's one, chances are there's more. And obviously this is quite a dense full plant. So I think after this video, I'm gonna have to get my isopropyl alcohol out and I'm gonna have to sit down, go through and try and give this plant a treatment because it's growing so beautifully. And touch wood, this is a Hoya that I don't think has ever had pests in the time that I've had it. It's just been really resilient. It hasn't really given me any grief at all. And I've had it for, probably about a year and a half, two years now. It's growing really nicely. It's fairly quick to grow as well. You can see it's got lots of new growth kind of coming out the top there. All the lighter growth is new growth. So yeah, it's also just a very resilient one and adaptable when it comes to different lighting conditions. And again, Hoyas typically are quite like that in their adaptability, but this one grows up on my hanging rail, which I'm not quite sure if you can see in shot. It's just above there. Um, and it really doesn't get much natural light at all. It grows in very low light and still gives me beautiful growth. So yeah, bar the mealybug situation, it is just a fabulous Hoya. But yeah, oh, 
I'm gonna have to deal with that later. So all the pictures that I saw of the Hoya Gratzlis on Instagram were kind of in the same way that I'm growing mine. None of them seem to be on a trellis. So I think that's the general kind of consensus. This plant obviously likes to be grown that way. And then I saw this reel from my friend Sophie who's wholesome house plants on Instagram. And oh my goodness, look at how beautiful hers is. It's just stunning. Her plants are amazing. And then this was another plant swap one. This is my Hoya latifolia. And the reason that I really wanted this Hoya is because I've got the Hoya latifolia Sarawak, which I in initially didn't think was a latifolia. I thought it was just called the Hoya Sarawak. And again, similar to what I've just said about the Gratz list, from that moment on, I was kind of on the hunt to find a true latifolia. And supposedly this is one. Uh, and it's giving me beautiful growth. Again, I've chopped it back recently just to try and get the plant a little bit fuller. I've potted two sections up together and surprise, surprise, it is in semi-hydro. And it is giving me some lovely new growth. Its growth tends to come in quite small and almost quite similar to anthuriums. It just kind of sizes up and up. So I'm hoping that as time goes on, this plant will just continue to increase in size. But it's one that, again, I do need to get onto a trellis. I can tell that this is a plant that would quite like to climb, as you can't really see at the moment because I've chopped it back, but it was getting quite lengthy and tenderly, despite having very good light. So it was looking for something to climb, and I just decided to propagate those sections. But yeah, when it starts happening again, potentially it's already starting just there, uh, but I will be getting it onto the trellis and I will be encouraging it to climb because I think that's how I can bring out the best in this plant. I think that's how I'm gonna get some beautiful big growth like these leaves down here. But what I love about this plant is the shape of its leaves, which I feel like aren't, I don't know, you kind of, you get a better impression of them in person. Perhaps if I show you the back of the leaf, you can kind of gauge it a little bit better, but I love how it's got these gorgeous little tips to the leaf. Like, again, they're almost like little little teardrops. In fact, what I was saying about the, Ho the Hoya croniana, the lacanosa, they're almost like big versions of those leaves, which are, again, so delicate and beautiful. And yeah, I just think it's lovely. It's a really lovely Hoya. So it's one that I'm really excited about. I can't wait to see what it does for me when I do get it onto a trellis. I think it should be quite fast to grow because, again, I've had this one for maybe a year now and it only had two leaves. So yeah, I'll let you know how it gets on, but as I say, I'm really excited about it and I can't wait to see what it does for me next. So having looked at the plant community posts for the Hoya latifolia, again, I kind of feel like I might have a hybrid plant. I see lots of similarities to my latifolia and to another type of Hoya that I've got as well that I'll show you later in the video, uh, which is a form of the latifolia, but I don't know if mine's a true latifolia. This picture here looks the most similar to mine shape-wise, but I'm not entirely sure, so let me know what you think. And I thought I'd bring you over to this one. It's my Hoya Susie Q, and I'm just bringing the camera over because I just tried to train her to climb the curtain rail here. It's, um, it's not going great. As you can see, the section has actually fallen down and unwound, but I'm hoping that I might be able to kind of use this as a bit of a trellis replacement and get her climbing all the way along because I think that would just look amazing. She's such a fast growing, beautiful, beautiful Hoya. And this one's actually a hybrid plant. This one is a hybrid of the Crimson Queen and the Hoya Crinkleate. And I just think she's got the most beautiful, beautiful leaves. She's got those beautiful kind of white outlines. And in fact, if you look just down here, some of her growth that's been sun stressed has come out really pinky and gorgeous. So yeah, she's a beautiful Hoya that I absolutely love and she's obviously getting insanely long. She is very, very speedy when it comes to growing. And she also blooms like crazy. In the last few months, I haven't known a time where she's not blooming. She's just, yeah, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So yeah, she's a really rewarding Hoya to grow. I also really like the look of her like that. If I could get her growing along like that, I think that would work really well. She's very easy to care for because she is a hybrid plant as well. She's very resilient to lots of things disease-wise. Hybrid plants typically are because they've got two different genes. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any, if anything you would do differently to kind of help train her to climb, let me know. But I think she's just gorgeous, so yeah. 
So when I searched for the Hoya Suzy Q, actually nothing came up. So what I'm showing you is pictures of the Hoya Crimson Queen, which is one of the parent plants, and it obviously looks very, very similar to this. Some people have been asking whether or not the Suzy Q is actually a thing, whether or not it's a scam. But if you look at this clip of the Hoya Crimson Queen, you can see that its leaves are a lot flatter compared to my Suzy Q, which is crossed with the crinkle eight. And this little Hoya is the Hoya Matilde. And this one currently lives in my bedroom cabinet. And my bedroom cabinet tends to be the place where I put plants that are either kind of in a rehab stage, something's gone a little bit wrong with them, I haven't quite figured them out yet. And this plant's been in there for a really, really long time. And I think I probably need to bite the bullet and try it out of the cabinet again now. But the first time I got a cutting of this plant was probably getting on for about four years ago now. And I just didn't get on well with it at all. I really struggled with it. And typically, typically, I've had a few exceptions, but typically Hoyas are quite easy plants to grow. They tend to make very good beginner plants. And I just could not keep this one happy. But yeah, again, I've got it in sphagnum moss and similarly to the Hoya caudata sumatra, I know it needs to come out of moss. It's been in here for way too long. I'm thinking probably semi-hydro for this one just because I've had such success growing Hoyas in that recently and it seems like a fairly safe bet. But yeah, in the time that it's been in the cabinet, it has been giving me really gorgeous growth and I just love the shape of its leaves. Like I've spoken before about how much I love the Peperomia Hope because it's got those gorgeous little kind of succulent, robust leaves. And this one in some ways is actually very, very similar. And it does look again like the sort of Hoya that would probably do quite well on a trellis. As you can see, it is kind of putting out, when I say tendrils, I just mean these sections of growth that don't have foliage on them. Foliage can develop, like you can see some, the start of some teeny tiny leaves just there. But on the whole, that growth tends to size up when it has got something to climb. So yeah, semi-hydro and a trellis are probably what I'm gonna do next for this one. But I just think it's the most adorable Hoya. And since I've had it in my bedroom cabinet, I have essentially done nothing to it, apart from keep the moss hydrated. I, ha I barely open that cabinet, to be honest. I open it maybe like once or twice a week. And this one just seems really happy in there. So I think in terms of growing tips for this plant, from my experience, high humidity, relatively high light and just don't mess with it too much just kind of let it let it do its thing and I think that's probably where I went wrong the first time I was just fiddling with it too much because I was just getting into Hoyas and I wanted to love them and for that reason it just it didn't work but yeah I'll um I'll let you know when I get her on a trellis because I think she's gonna look gorgeous I also have never had this one flower for me and I actually don't even know if I know what her blooms look like so that'll be interesting but yeah, she's lovely. So when I typed in the Hoya Matilde, loads of different varieties of it came up and oh my goodness, look at this variegated one. I feel like I have just added a new plant to my wish list. That is so beautiful. But the general consensus seems to be that most people are growing this plant on a trellis. I saw a reel that someone had made on how to make a really cool trellis. So I'm definitely gonna check out some ideas. Also, yeah, that's that's the splash. That's just a beautiful variety of it. So again, another wishless plant. But yeah, it just looks beautiful and it's giving me the courage to get mine out of the cabinet. And another one that I only got very recently, in fact, at the same time that I got the Hoya Obervata splash, so less than a week ago, is the Hoya Dasyantha. And again, this one, despite being very new, has beaten out a few of my other Hoyas and made it onto this list just because it's really blowing my mind and I think it is so glossy and beautiful. And this is a Hoya that I've never owned before, so it's very early days with this one, but it was rooted when I got it. The seller that I, I bought off on Etsy very kindly included, this is a freebie in my order, which is so nice of her. Like honestly, I, my mind was just blown when I saw this Hoya. Um, but again, I have got it into semi-hydro. I'm just using a little goo dessert pot. I keep these and I use them for loads of things. But I do have faith that this one's gonna be pretty happy like this. As I say, it has already got a really well-established root system and typically Hoya do just respond very well to this substrate and in the environment I'm keeping it in and my cabinet. So I'm hoping that I might get some new growth from it soon. I don't know much about it yet, so I don't know how quick it is to grow, but like if, if it's new growth looks anything like that, if it's the size of that, it will be incredible because that leaf 
is just ginormous and it's so glossy and you can't really like you can see a little bit of veination it's not overly defined if you look at the back of the leaf you can see it a little bit better but yeah it's just a very interesting one and as i say it's one that i've never never seen in person previously never owned so it's one that i'm just really looking forward to seeing how it grows for me so I've obviously only just got the Hoya Dasiantha, so I, I haven't seen that much on it. So I found it really interesting to look at the community posts and see how other people's were doing. There weren't masses of posts on this Hoya, so I'm not sure how readily available it is, but just look at that foliage. I love how dark and rich and kind of foresty green it is. It's just so beautiful. And this one's another one that desperately needs to be potted up. I don't know why I haven't done it sooner, but it is the Variegated Hoya Macrophylla, and it's so beautiful. I love everything about this plant. I love the edges of it. They're really quite pinky, and I just love the growth that it gives me. It's quite unpredictable currently in its growth structure, which I also quite like. Like, it hasn't done any kind of major tendrilling. It's, it just is giving me really beautiful growth, and it's giving me lots of different growth points as well. You can see a new one just kind of starting there. And this is another one that's in my bedroom cabinet in my rehab zone because I because I don't really know why is the answer to that. I don't know why I've got it in that cabinet apart from the fact that that cabinet does have ridiculously high humidity levels. It gets over 90 most days, 90% humidity. And Hoyas typically do, they don't need high humidity, but they do typically respond very well to high humidity. And all of the growth it's given me has just been so beautiful and shiny and conditioned. So I just haven't, I haven't taken it out of there. It's partly laziness, to be honest. Um, but despite the fact it's not tendrilling at the moment, I do think it's probably another one that's going to grow quite well on a trellis as opposed to just trailing. So my thoughts with this one actually, similarly to how I'm growing my Hoya Susie Q, which I showed you earlier, I'm thinking of maybe training it to climb round something like a curtain rail or, I don't know, hanging a piece of string across the room and getting it to kind of climb round that just because I really love the foliage and I'd love to... I don't know, I'd love to, I, I like growing Hoyas on trellises, but also I like it, but I don't like it. I don't like having loads of trellisy plants just because I don't, I don't know, I don't particularly like the look of it. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to try and potentially get a little bit creative in how I do it for this plant when the time comes. But yeah, it's a lovely one. It's been very easy to grow, very quick to root as well. I got this as an unrooted cutting and it is incredibly well rooted now and I have also taken sections and propagated since having it I mean literally just look at those aerial roots just there it's covered in them so yeah it's a really gorgeous one and one that I really really love so there was quite a lot that came up on the variegated Hoya macrophylla. It's obviously a very popular one. And as you can see, a lot of people are choosing to grow it on trellises or kind of trellis-like equivalents. But one of the things that really amazed me was the different varieties and variegation you can get within the species, because just look at the variegation there. And oh my goodness, the variegation on this one is obviously very similar to mine, but look at the size of those leaves. That is goals right there. <laughs> And I'm showing you this one as a cutting of the plant and not the full plant because the full plant again had mealybugs very badly. This is my Hoya crinkolate and it's a beautiful plant. It's one of the first Hoyas that I added to my collection and until I moved here it was doing amazingly. And the mother plant got mealybugs around the same time as actually a couple of my other Hoyas and I decided to do a little experiment in the name of making a YouTube video and I covered this, I covered the mother plant with a bag, I let the mealybug infestation just kind of run its course for a few weeks and it was riddled with mealybugs, they were everywhere. And then I took the mother plant out and I showed how I treated mealybugs. And although the mother plant is bouncing back, she's still she's still kind of teetering on the edge. I haven't had any more mealybugs, but her growth is just very flat and deflated. So I have taken lots and lots of cuttings and I am propagating this plant just so that I can make sure I've got lots of healthy sections to either pot back up with the mother plant and just fill her out a little bit or potentially start a brand new plant. I'm not entirely sure yet. But the thing I love about the crinkleate is the crinkles on its leaves are just like, they're like abs. They are so indented and robust. And I think that is why 
it's so difficult when this plant does get mealybugs because they get into all of the little dents and crevices and they can just be a little bit of a nightmare to deal with. Uh, and also, if you're over on my Patreon, you will have seen I did a houseplant tour of my mum's plant collection a little while ago. And I got my Hoya crinklate at the same time as my mum got hers. She really liked mine, and so I was like, cool, let's get us both one. And hers is growing really differently. Like, as I say, mine's very kind of fairly small leaves, very crinkly, and hers is completely flat, and the, the leaves are quite big, and I don't know exactly what it is that's that's caused that. I mean, I don't think the conditions they've been growing in are that different lighting-wise. I think probably watering-wise we're a little bit different in that sense, but yeah, I just found that really interesting. So if any of you have any theories, then please do let me know down below. But yeah, fingers crossed I can get a lovely full plant of this one back again soon because it is gorgeous. It is, I think, as I say, probably my oldest Hoya and I'd really like to get it back to health. But for now, I've just got lots and lots of sections propagating, so fingers crossed. So the Hoya crinkleate just here in this reel is quite similar to how my big mother plant was looking maybe six months ago before I had to start doing chopbacks and before the mealybug infestation. But as you can see, oh, just look at the blooms. They're so beautiful. But just look at the abs on those leaves. They're crazy. It's one of the reasons I just love this plant. And this one here, I'm not actually sure if this is a crinkleate, but this is very similar to how my mum's is looking. So yeah, as I say, if you've got any theories on that, I'd be really interested to know. And then this is a Hoya that I love, but I was debating whether or not to include it in this video just because it's actually not doing that well at the moment. It's my Hoya Croniana Super Silver, and if you look at it from there, it looks absolutely fine. But if I just bring it in and you look at the leaves, you can see they're just a little bit shriveled and not as full and plump and healthy as they could be. And I, I honestly don't know exactly what's causing this. It's been happening for the past kind of like three, four weeks now, and I suspect that it could be flat mite related. I'm not entirely sure. I've ordered a microscope so that I can check the plant for flat mites, but I can't see any mealybugs. Its roots look really healthy. It hasn't changed positions in my home. It's getting good light. It's getting fairly good humidity. And it is actually still putting out new growth as well. Like, as you can see down here, it's got bits that have got lovely new growth coming in, but the, the body of the plant, the main body just doesn't look as good as it could. And I know that when this plant is lovely and full, it is, it looks much different to this. And so, yeah, I'm still kind of getting to the root cause of why this is happening. But this is another one that I got as really quite a small plant and I expected it. I know I've already said this about the standard Croniana, but I expect this one to be quite a slow grower. I don't know why, I think maybe just because the Super Silver wasn't that readily available at the time that I got it, it was quite a desirable houseplant. But at the time that I first got this plant, I was growing it again in my mum's conservatory when I was living back at home, and it grew so quickly, like potentially quicker than any of my other Hoyas, and I've chopped her back so much in the time that I've had her. I've got, this is another one, I've got sections of growth propagating all around my flat. I've probably got, I don't know, like 13, 14 propagations of her going at the moment. And this is one that I just quite like giving to people as a gift, like for birthdays and stuff like that, because it's on the whole a very easy plant to grow. It does root so quickly. It's a perfect beginner plant. So yeah, I'm constantly chopping her, but I have held back in the last few weeks of taking any other cuts just because I'm not quite sure what's going on. So if you've got any theories, please let me know in the comments, but otherwise I'm going to give her a really good check with the microscope and hopefully get to the bottom of the issue because I really love this plant. But yeah, I'll let you know. I'll let you know what happens. So if you look at, for example, this picture here, you can see how inflated and kind of juicy this one looks. It looks so healthy. And that's what mine used to look like before it starts doing the weird deflating thing. And I've, I guess I say, I haven't got to the bottom of exactly why that is yet, but I just love how this plant can look different colors in different lights. Like here, it looks quite bluey. And then if you look at some others, it looks almost completely silver. Like this picture, it looks completely silver. This one is so splashy. 
and I think it must have got sun stressed, but it also looks kind of pink, which is amazing. And I know I've already shown you the Hoya YSEA tricolour that I was growing on the trellis, but this is just the standard green Hoya YSEA, and I think it's beautiful. I actually got the variegated version before I got the the green one, and this one is also quite slow to grow, to be honest. I um I don't know why I thought it would be quicker. Uh, I think maybe at the time, because my tri-colour was a little bit quicker when it was in different lighting conditions. Um, but this one also, also had mealybugs, and I think I have now dealt with the problem. I treated this one a few times, but the last treatment I did was about three months ago, and touch wood, I haven't seen any mealybugs since. And since then as well, you can see that beautiful new growth coming in just there. She has started putting out some new growth for me. Oh, and in fact there as well. I didn't even notice that one. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's probably why she wasn't growing very well for me before, because her energy levels were just a little bit depleted. Um, so I'm hoping that now, now she's kind of bouncing back and recovering, I should get some lovely growth from her. But obviously we are just coming out of growing season here in the UK and the hours of light are shorter and the light that she's getting is already pretty low. She's another one that I've got on my hanging rail. So I'm hoping that she keeps giving me lovely new growth, but if not, come growing season next year, I'm, I'm hoping she'll do well for me. And she's another one that I'm, as you can see, just growing as a hanging plant. I haven't got her on a trellis. I don't know how much of a difference it would make if you're growing this plant on a trellis, then let me know. But she seems perfectly happy just growing in this way at the moment and she is filling out nicely towards the top. So yeah, that's how she will stay for the time being. But yeah, I just really love her. I love, as I say, the length of her leaves. I think she's just really pretty and again, bar the mealybugs has been very, very easy to look after. <laughs> So when I searched for the Hoya Waetii, I also got lots of pictures of the variegated version of it, and that picture, just look at that, that blew my mind. But typically with the green one, most people seem to be growing it in a similar way to me as a hanging plant, so I think, I, I don't think it's kind of common to trellis this type of Hoya. And this one here, just look at the length of its leaves. I don't know if that's the camera playing tricks on my mind, but they look so long. And I've actually got several plants potted in with this one, but the one that we are looking at is this one, the Hoya Bella. And I know I've already shown you the variegated Hoya Bella and this, the Alba Marginata. But the standard green Hoya Bella, as I said when I spoke about that one, is one of the fastest Hoyas I've, I've fastest growing Hoyas I've ever met, fastest growing Hoyas I've ever encountered. And I have got the big, I don't know if you can see just here above me, I've got a big mother plant of it here as well which is doing okay again like it was doing okay until recently but i went away on holiday and i'm not quite sure what's happened again i think it potentially could be flat mite related so i'll let you know when the microscope arrives but this is a section that i've got that is just very 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 healthy and full and just gorgeous like the green of those leaves is just beautiful and this was a hoya that i wanted for such a long time and i finally got around about a year and a half ago and it was really quite small it was probably only about the size of this section here when I first got it uh, and as I say it just kind of grows like a weed it puts out new growth all the time it also flowers all the time and I wish in fact if you go back and you look at like my house plant tours and stuff like that you'll be able to see my Hoya Bella flowering it doesn't have any flowers currently but as I say the main mother plant isn't looking as good as she could be at the moment so I think that's probably why but no, it's just a very rewarding Hoya to grow. I think it looks beautiful. Again, it's so delicate. Its little leaves are just so gorgeous. It's one that's a lot more predictable in its growth as well. Like I know I was talking about some Hoyas throwing out very weird leaf shapes and you're not quite sure what they're gonna do next. This one, you just kind of know what it's doing. And if things start to go wrong for that reason, typically it is quite easy to spot them early. Like I can see from a few weird misshapen leaves that my mother plant's given me, I could just immediately tell that there was something wrong with it. So that is quite a good thing. But apart from that, it's been a very easy one to take care of. It hasn't really given me any grief apart from recently. Uh, so yeah, it's it's another really great one. So when I searched for the Hoya Bella, interestingly, one of the first things that came up was the variegated Hoya Bella, the Albo Marginata. And as you can see in the caption here, it actually says Annika Buies or Annika Boys. Uh, I might be pronouncing that wrong. Um, but I'm guessing maybe that is the true name for my Albo Marginata. 
and that's why I couldn't find anything when I was searching before. But anyway, that's going off the point, the Hoya Bella. Yeah, that's that's how a healthy Hoya Bella should look, and typically that's how mine's looking. Mine's a little bit lighter in colour usually. Uh, I guess that comes down to lighting, but look at those blooms. How beautiful are they? And this one's a really diddy one, but this is the Hoya AH074. And I'd never heard of this Hoya prior to, I think this was another plant swap one. Um, and it kind of gave me Wilbur Graves vibes with kind of longer leaves. And I've already spoken about how much I love the Hoya Wilbur Graves. So this one just really, really excited me. And it's given me that leaf in the time that I've had it. And I haven't had it that long. It's probably only been about eight months that I've had this plant. So it's kind of hard to gauge its growth rate in the time that I've had it because as I say, it hasn't really been long enough to gauge. Often once they get going, they start pushing out loads of new growth, but this one isn't quite there yet. But when you Google pictures of this plant, it can get so silvery, like almost, almost like Nova Ghost silvery. You can see a, like a big splash of silveriness just there. And I love splashy Hoyas anyway, but yeah, I'm really hoping that potentially some of the new growth it gives me might be, might be gorgeous and silvery because I love the silvery plants. So yeah, I haven't got a huge amount to say about it at the moment, apart from the fact that it's one that's just really exciting me. And so far, like I, I, when I was going through and kind of making this list of Hoyas that I wanted to talk about, and there was obviously some that I'm not including, I was just thinking about the ones that are making me really excited and I'm looking forward to seeing as they develop. And this is definitely up there. So yeah, I'll continue to keep you updated with it. I'll let you know what it does for me next. Not quite sure what the long-term growing plans are gonna be for this one. I might trellis it, I might get creative with kind of trellisy ideas. Um, but yeah, for the time being, it's just living happily in my cabinet, slowly growing, but remaining looking very beautiful. So I wasn't sure how many posts there would be on this plant, but there was a surprising amount. And this is what I'm talking about with the silvery colouring. Just look at those leaves. They are just drop dead gorgeous. Oh my God. They're so beautiful. I really want mine to continue to grow and give me a beautiful balance of that silvery colour because it's just out of this world stunning. And I've actually just taken this one straight out of water. So as you can see, it's literally bare root. Um, but this is the Hoya Parasitica Black Margin. And I do again have the full plant of this one, but I forgot to get it down for this video. It's right above me and I can't reach that without a chair. And I had a bit just propagating here. So I thought I would show you this bit. But I love the Parasitica Black Margin. It's, again, it's one that grows quite differently in different lighting conditions. Like, it's it's one that is very adaptable when it comes to lower levels of light. And I found that definitely to be the case since living here. It's not getting anywhere near as high light as it was when I was back at my mum's. And it's growing really well. And as you can see, it is putting out, it's got a little new leaf just there. It's putting out some lovely new growth but it's called Parasitica Black Margin because it typically has very black edges to its leaves. And since I've been growing it in lower light, the black edges haven't been quite so pronounced. So I think if I want to kind of get that lovely black marginness back, then I should probably up its lighting when I put it up. But yeah, just look at those roots. This one's definitely ready to be potted up. And I think what I'm probably gonna do is just pot it back up with the mother plant because the mother plant is doing well, but she's just not quite as full as I'd like her to be. I took lots of cuttings of her in the past just because I wanted to create lots of this plant. And now I'm thinking I'm probably gonna just pot them all back up together and get a beautiful full one going. But yeah, she's she's not the quickest Hoya to grow in the world. I mean, I say that she's given me three new leaves probably in the space of about a month, which I guess is quite fast. But I do find that she kind of grows in bursts like that. Like she might not give me leaves for, I don't know, five months and then I'll get three leaves in a month. It's just a little bit unpredictable, but a very easy Hoya, one that I've never particularly struggled with. And so, yeah, if I was starting out with Hoyas again, it's one that I think I would definitely recommend. So I kind of expected there to be hundreds and hundreds of posts about this plant because it is such a photogenic one, but I really had to search for them. They weren't coming up easily. I don't know if some people know it by a different name perhaps. And look at this bloom. I've, mine's never bloomed for me, so this was amazing to see. And also in this reel as well, you can kind of tell the black margin, the black edges a little bit more than you can see on mine currently. 
And this one here is the Hoya Pubicalix Hawaiian. And this was actually originally sold to me as a Hoya Gratzlis. I thought it was a Hoya Gratzlis for ages. And then you guys corrected me and said no. I mean, in fact, you just said it was a Pubicalix. But the new growth, I'm trying to see if it's got any new growth that I can show you. Kind of there, but like it's not actually that clear at the moment. It's new growth comes in a really dark purple colour. And that's what differentiates it from just the normal Pubicalix. Um, but this is another one that has had mealybugs fairly recently, so I've I've separated it from the other Hoyas it was next to. Um, this is kind of a little bit of a rehab corner at the moment, to be honest. I mean, I haven't seen pests on this plant for at least a few weeks, and I'm just doing very, very careful checks. But the thing that's amazing about this plant now is that its growth is getting ginormous. Like, I don't know if you can properly gauge how big that is but it's just crazy and i just love the texture of this plant i think it's so beautiful and it grows really nicely for me and i haven't really done a huge amount to keep it happy as you can see it's in a fairly low light spot at the moment it's not getting any direct light and it seems pretty happy there so yeah again another really good beginner one i would say you don't see cuttings of this labeled correctly as they are as a pubicolix hawaiian that much um but yeah, I think it's one that if you do see, you should definitely try and bag because it's, for me, it's a really, a really gorgeous kind of dreamy Hoya. Oh, in fact, I missed it before. This is how its new growth comes in. I don't know how well you can tell, but as you can see, it's kind of fading to green there, but it's kind of purpley and very, very dark and dramatic. One of the first things that I saw on the Explore page that blew my mind was this reel. And just look at the difference in the flowers on the same plant. How does that happen? I, I don't know anything about this, so if anyone can educate me, please let me know in the comments. But this one's a really good example of the new foliage coming in so dark and purpley, because just look at that. It's such a gorgeous plant. And I actually forgot to include this one on the list originally, and then I saw it as I was going around to get the plants for this video, and I was like, oh, this one has to be on there. So I swapped it out with another one, but it is my Hoya Carnosa. And again, this is one that I showed in my side-by-side -side growth updates video recently. And I just think it is the most beautiful, beautiful Hoya. It's just very classic. It's very green and waxy. It looks lovely in conditions. And the thing I love about this one is my friend Lottie's granddad gave me this as a big cutting from his plant. And his plant is apparently huge and he's had it for years and years and years. So I feel like I've got a little bit, a little bit of a legacy of that here. And it's just growing so well for me. I chopped it up. I propagated in lots of different mediums. Uh, and actually soil propagation was was the most effective thing in this case. I've got I've got it potted in in soil now and it's giving me the most amazing growth. Like all of this down here is brand new growth. As you can see, it's putting out lovely growth there. It's getting ready to give me some new leaves. And again, I don't know what I'm going to do about trellising this one, but for the time being, I'm just letting it kind of grow wild. It doesn't seem to be overly leggy. So in the time that it's not, I'm more than happy to just let it grow like this because I think it's just lovely. So yeah, I couldn't not feature this Hoya just because it's one that I'm constantly checking on at the moment. I'm constantly going back and looking at and seeing what it's doing for me. I feel like it's giving me new growth pretty much every single time I check back. So it is very quick, very, very quick. And I haven't owned it that long. I've only had this plant since the beginning of the year. So for about nine months now. But as I say, it, it has given me lots of growth in the time that I've had it. And considering that I chopped it all up and rooted it as well, I think this is up there with the fast growing Hoyas, especially considering that this was all completely unrooted and I essentially rooted all the sections and this is this is all growth from the last nine months. So yeah, if you could, if you were able to just get your hands on like a cutting of this plant, I would personally say go for the cutting as opposed to the full plant just because it is very, very quick to grow. When I searched for Hoya Carnosa on the plant community page, pretty much every single type of Hoya under the sun came up. And I think this is why it's so difficult sometimes to get your hands on a true Hoya Carnosa. This one here is the only one that I saw that I thought potentially could have been a true Hoya Carnosa. But yeah, there was just so much, so much confusion and so many tags. So yeah, makes me feel very, very lucky and proud to have mine. And I've already shown you the variegated Hoya macrophylla in this video, and this, I am pretty sure, 
is just the standard Hoya macrophylla. And the reason that I say I'm pretty sure is because I was I was sold this plant as a Hoya macrophylla red. I've had lots of different opinions from you guys on why this is. Some of you have said the red is down to the sun stress of the plant and how kind of pink and red it looks then. Others have said that it's down to the colour of the blooms and this plant hasn't flowered for me yet so I can't comment on whether or not maybe it is a macrophylla red that just hasn't flowered. But as you can see it's a proper chunky one, like its growth is really really big and it is actually quite fast to grow. This is one that I chopped up into three kind of leaf cuttings when I first got it and this is probably... Oh, I might be a little bit off here, but I think about a year and a half's worth of growth. And as you can see, all of the leaves it's giving me are just really big and chunky. And I just love that about this plant. So yeah, again, growing plants currently, I don't plan on getting it on a trellis just because I like the way it's growing like this. It's in my cabinet over there, getting lovely lights, lovely humidity, and the plant seems happy. So while the plant seems happy, I'm not gonna change out too much. I say it's in my cabinet over there, it's currently not because, you guessed it, mealybugs. I have struggled with mealybugs on this plant quite a lot recently and I thought that it was over and then I found a mealybug the other day and I just don't want to risk putting it back in there just yet. So it's currently living in a cabinet-like conditions. I've got a plastic bag over it and it's just over by my window but I'm hoping at some point soon it will be able to go back into my cabinet because yeah. Ooh. I've also just noticed it's got a little new leaf there. Look at how tiny that is, it's so pretty. But yeah, I really love this one and I feel very proud of it because it's come such a long way in the time that I've owned it. And yeah, just find it an all round, very rewarding plant to grow. Initially I typed in Hoya macrophylla, but I couldn't see anything that resembled my plant. So I typed in Hoya macrophylla red, which is what I was sold the plant as, and this came up. And this looks very much like the picture of the plant that I thought I was receiving. Obviously the plant that I've got is not that plant, so I'm a little bit baffled as to what my Hoya macrophylla, if it even is a macrophylla, is. This again is a slightly variegated Hoya macrophylla, and the structure of it just looks completely different. This one that I saw is probably the most similar, but even so, it's not exactly the same. So I suspect I've got some sort of hybrid. And then finally, I feel like this video would not be complete if I didn't speak about my pride and joy Hoya, my Hoya Latifolia Sarawak. And I know I showed you a Latifolia earlier in this video, and I said that that, that was the one that kind of made me want to get a true Latifolia. And that's because I didn't realize for a very long time that this was a Latifolia Sarawak. Oh, she's got a big tendril that's catching on things. Um, but she's finally starting to give me new growth, which is so exciting. That leaf is literally sizing up by the day at the moment, and it's so beautiful. And she's flowering like crazy. I know I spoke about this the other day, um, but she's just finished flowering from this peduncle. And as you can see, if the camera will focus on it, it's actually like a triple peduncle, which is just crazy. So she's already, as I say, bloomed from that once recently and is just throwing out the most insane amount. I've got another one just there. I've got about eight at the top here and I really don't know what to do about this. I don't know whether or not to just let her flower because I know her blooms are beautiful and she does look gorgeous when she blooms, but I really just want to help encourage some of her energy into more growth. So I'm a little bit unsure about whether or not I chop them back or not. I know a lot of you are saying don't do it, but I don't really know. Um, but yeah, this massive long tendril that she's got just here, is also starting to give me new little leaves as well, which makes me so happy. Um, so yeah, again, I think probably trellising this one is gonna be a good option. I did have her wound around just a longer bit of bamboo for a while, uh, but for various reasons, I did decide to chop that tendril back. I've spoke about this in other videos, but I lost the leaves that were on it and she was just very leggy and I was like, why not try and get some more growth going? And I'm kind of glad that I did because now this has happened. So. That's kind of what makes me think maybe doing another chop is the right thing to do, but I don't know. I don't know. Please let me know what you think. Um, but no, she's a wonderful, wonderful Hoya and one that, again, my collection just would not be complete without. I love her so much. So when I first got my Hoya Latifolia Sarawak, I remember searching for it and I couldn't find anything on it. So I was really happy to see that the plant community is now 
coming together to celebrate the Hoya Latifolia Sarawak because genuinely I think it is the most amazing Hoya. Just look at the size of these ones. Oh my goodness, I would be so happy if mine one day reached this size. Oh, she's getting there. She's getting there. And look at all those blooms. My God. But yeah, there were loads of posts celebrating this plant and I don't know why, it just made me really, really happy. So yeah, do let me know down in the comments what some of your favourite Hoyas are. I know I've shown you quite a lot today. I have got more that I love, but these have just been the tip top kind of apple of my eye ones. So yeah, let me know what some of yours are. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video. Hey, sexy part lovers.